Third movement is very different because again, coming from the tradition of Mozart and Haydn, the third movement was supposed to be a minuet called Minuet and Trio. The minuet part was a dance form in three, not too fast, and the trio part was called that because it was usually played by contrasting instruments. So if the, the first section was played mainly by the strings, the trio would be with the woodwinds and you would have you know, a trio. You'd have a bass line and two treble lines, or an oboe, a flute, and a, and a bassoon or something like that. And then you go back and do the beginning again. And that was called A, B, A form. So you had the very beginning, and then you had the trio, and then and even when it wasn't three instruments, a trio, we still call it a trio. Now Beethoven followed that form. It was the initial material, trio, and the recapitulation, or the A section again. So what did he do that was unusual? First of all, it's a scherzo. The scherzo is a faster. It starts again with the lower instruments of the orchestra. This time, not the cellos and the violas, but the cellos and the basses. And the theme... <laughs> It's kind of mysterious, this whole... They're very softly. It leads to the, uh, uh, in a sense, a proclamation. Uh, Now, what do you notice about that? So the theme is, is the theme from the scherzo, but it's the same rhythm, isn't it? Three short and one long, played by the horns. And the horns play it strong, and then the full orchestra comes in, and then it leads again back to this original theme that the cellos and the basses play in a mysterious way. And that gets somewhat developed, and it leads us to, to the trio section, to the, to the middle section. Now this section, usually it's played by some contrasting uh, instrument. So if the piece starts with the cellos and the basses, by now you'd figure the woodwinds or the violins or somebody would play that trio section. In this case, it's the cellos and basses again. It's one of the more famous passages for cellos and basses. In fact, if, you, if you're a bass player and you go to an audition for an orchestra, very often you'll play this because it, the clarity of pitch and, and the quality of sound is very crucially important. So this begins, it's loud, even though the tempo, the speed of the movement is the same, they're faster notes, so it feels faster. And there's a little what we call fugato. So the cellos and basses start it, and as time goes on, the violas come in, the second violins come in, First violins come in, and then that's repeated. And again, it happens a, 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 a second time, and then the, the woodwinds join into this trio section. Uh, eventually, um, Beethoven does it again, but the third time he does it, uh, it's all soft. Everything's soft. And in fact, with soft, also, uh, in, the, in the case of the violins, becomes more legato, smoother. So again, it's Beethoven's checklist. You know, I did it loud a few times. Now I got to do it soft, and and maybe I should do it actually long rather than short. And, and it's just it's just this incredible imagination. Now, does he think that way? I don't know, but that's certainly the way it appears. The scherzo's in three sections, A, B, A. So now we're back to A. So this should just be a repeat. Uh, during Mozart and Haydn's time, very often they would just say, back to the beginning, and you do it again and stop. Well, Beethoven didn't do that <laughs> very often. He did it on occasion. First symphony he did it. Second symphony he did it. 
But in this symphony, he doesn't. And, but what he does with that melody, he has the uh, orchestra play it uh, in the strings pizzicato, which means they pluck the strings. Uh, it starts out with bassoon. And instead of this heroic theme, you know, this, remember this, um, instead of that, you hear a clarinet going, and then you hear uh, uh, an oboe playing. So it's the same idea, except it's all wrong. <laughs> Soft, short, uh, little notes, uh, not heroic at all. And it goes like that continually. It's all that way. And then, what does he do? He has the timpani play the melody. So the, 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 the strings hold this, uh, this uh, a simple chord, and the timpani goes. And that, in a sense, becomes a melody, even though it's a single note. It's the timpani playing this, and nothing happens until all of a sudden the violins play. So what are they doing? Remember the opening theme? They are just doing that. Over and over again. And, and varying it slightly. But it's still mysterious, it's still all soft. Nothing much happens, and it's all suspended. Then, in a short amount of time, there's this huge crescendo, and we have the triumphal last movement. It is a remarkable moment. To this time, it's probably the most remarkable moment in music, to have this suspension, to have nothing happening, and everybody's just waiting, what, what, what is he doing? It's so soft, what's gonna happen? All of a sudden, there's an explosion, and people often talk about it from darkness to light. Remember, the first movement was in C minor. But now, he's in C major. So, People talk about the transition from this minor to major as darkness to light. Um, also, the, the theme is a very, obviously, a very heroic theme. Played by the trumpets, horns. He adds piccolo, he adds trombones, he adds contrabassoon. so different from the first, played by the horns. Still heroic. The third theme changes a little bit. It's a more dolce, more sweet theme.
but it too doesn't stay that way very long and it becomes again a nice strong theme and so now we have the three themes and we repeat that again Then, after that repeated section, we have the normal development section of, uh, of this, and he uses those trombones, and now not just for weight and brilliance, but he uses them melodically as well. Uh, he has a few piccolo solos. The contrabassoon has, a, has an important role, and, uh, and, uh, and the development is quite extraordinary, but what happens in the middle of the development is, and it's going, it's going like gangbusters, and then all of a sudden you have these big, these big chords. The same material from the scherzo, which is uh, very much a three short and one long note. Can you imagine what it must have felt like in 1808 when an audience was sitting there hearing this great triumphal last movement and actually feels pretty comfortable and then he stops in the middle of it and just by repeating this one note and it gets softer and softer and it becomes the scherzo again. It gives Beethoven the chance to extend uh, the movement and repeat that great transition that he used from the scherzo to the last one. After that, we have the recapitulation. So, we have the exposition, the first thing, we have the big development, and um, then we have this interlude of the scherzo coming back and the connection to the now recapitulation. So all the material is, is brought back. Then at the end, and as I mentioned, there's some solos for the trombones, for the piccolo. I mean, you know, he really extends the orchestra. And then he leads to the coda. The coda in this case is at a faster tempo. It's at a presto tempo. And again, it ends triumphantly. And it is, without question, one of the great masterpieces of symphonic music of all time.